Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to be making rabbit noodle soup, but also we're going to be checking up on the seedlings that I started as well as the rabbits because I have two rabbits that are due very soon. Sparrow is actually due today. I am highly suspect that she is actually not pregnant, but we shall see, I guess. And Vanilla is due tomorrow. So I might spread this video out long enough to see if Vanilla actually has her babies tomorrow. She has been exhibiting lots of nesting behavior, so I am anticipating her to have babies, and I'm very, very excited about that litter. And sorry, you guys, Sparrow is a silver fox and Vanilla is a creme de argent, so we have one silver fox litter that's going to be happening and one creme de argent litter that's going to be happening, so I can't wait. I haven't had little babies in um, almost two months, I think. I think it's been probably two months now. So I am very excited to have little babies again. We, we really like having little baby bunnies here. But if you guys are new to my channel, we do use our rabbits for meat. Uh, we show them, we breed them to preserve the heritage breeds of the creme d'argent and the silver fox, but we also use them for homestead purposes. So we use them for meat and fur as well. And today I really wanted to show you guys how I make my rabbit noodle soup because it's probably one of my favorite things that I make here. We're actually going to be making this rabbit noodle soup with homemade noodles. You guys don't have to go that far. You can just use whatever noodles you have in your pantry. But first things first is I actually need to cook and shred a rabbit and I'm just gonna do a whole rabbit. That's what I usually do. Um, we're too lazy to part them out <laughs> before we freeze them. So I'm just gonna do the whole rabbit and then uh, later on we usually figure out something else to do with the leftover shredded rabbit because we usually don't use a whole one for the noodle soup. So what I usually do is I have my Instant Pot here and so I am going to set the rabbit in the Instant Pot with a cup of water and a whole rabbit usually, I usually set it for like 30 minutes. Usually our rabbits are around three-ish pounds um, so I just do 10 minutes per pound. It might be overkill. So I'm going to put the rabbit in there and I'm gonna set it on high pressure and let it cook for 30 minutes and then let it naturally release for 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna take it out and I usually let it cool like on a cookie sheet and then I'll shred it up. But let's get started with that. Okay, so here is what a rabbit from our freezer looks like. Uh, Jameson actually showed you guys on his jerky video that he recently made. And so what I'm gonna do is I just cut open the package. Sometimes I have to cut it in half to get it to fit in the Instant Pot because sometimes we're too lazy and wait until our rabbits are too big to actually be able to fit one in the Instant Pot. So don't be like us. I'm just gonna cut. Our scissors are starting to go bad. Pop them out of there. Believe it or not, this rabbit has actually been sitting in the fridge for about 24 hours and it's still very frozen. I think I actually can fit this in there. I'm just gonna have to shove it down in there a little bit, but yeah. There we go. And I am literally gonna make this so easy for you guys because all I do is I just put a cup of water in the spot with the rabbit. That's all it needs, just a little bit of moisture, and then set it to high. Get the lid on there first, obviously. And then we're gonna do pressure cook, and that's already set for 30 minutes on high, so I'm just gonna press start. And like I said, after it is done cooking, we let it natural release for about 10 minutes, and then take it out, and it should be shreddable. So now we are actually going to go out to the rabbit tree. No, I'm gonna show you these first actually. Let's show you the plants. I'm literally like so excited about this. Like you guys have no idea. I said I was gonna take gardening very seriously this year and I have definitely done that to the point where my tomatoes are so big and it's still like a month out until we can plant them outside. I actually had to repot them from four inch pots to six inch pots like all 30 of them. And then I just went ahead and repotted a bunch of other things too because the stuff's just getting really, really big. And I think it's a combination of I'm actually paying attention to them this year. And also I used a lot of rabbit poop in my soil. So uh, yeah, things are growing really, really fast and it is very exciting. So 
let's show you guys, shall we? Let's just start up on the top row here, but these are my tomatoes. And I told you guys when I was showing you my garden plans for the year, I'm doing two varieties of tomatoes. That's it, because I am a small suburban homesteader. And down here we have a couple more tomatoes that just wouldn't fit on that row up there. We have my dill that is growing slowly but surely. I actually just planted this a little over a week ago. We have nasturtium that I just planted a week ago. It is not sprouted yet, but I am expecting it to any day because the sunflowers that I planted at the very same time have sprouted. You can see them back there, but yeah. Very, very exciting. I'm excited to have sunflowers this year because I haven't done that on this property yet. And we have a kale planted in a larger pot here. I actually did that to all of my kales, but more of them are down below here. So just like so much kale, <laughs> but I'm very excited about the kale because most of it goes to the rabbits. And one of my goals this year is to supplement a lot of the rabbit feed with fresh greens. So we will see how that goes. I have a bunch of chamomile that is also planted and we've repotted most of it into the six inch pots and my spinach. And for some reason, I am still having issues with my spinach. I don't really know why. This one looks a little bit sickly. Um, there's one way back there next to the window that actually does look really good. So I don't know, it just seems sparse to me and I'm not really sure what's going on with it, but I mean, it, I, it's, I've had worse years for sure. I mean, it's doing better than it has in years past, but yeah, it's just a little bit smaller than I would like it to be. And then we have my Advarsky peppers up here that are getting so big. I'm very excited that they're going to be this big. And oh man, look, they're growing new leaves. That's very exciting. Marion, look how many eggs we have right now. I wish that I could find some buyers for these. <laughs> I specifically got my chickens um, like the specific breeds that I have because I wanted basically every single color of egg. So we have the Easter Egger right here, Americana, Olive Egger, White Leghorn. Was this a Black Copper Marin? I think it's Black Copper Marin. Um, I think this is one of my Marins. Um, the really light ones I believe is my Salmon Favarole and I don't know, Buff Brahma maybe. I don't know for sure. The brown ones kind of confuse me on the breeds, but yeah, they're so pretty. I really love having rainbow eggs. I think it is so much fun. I love the ones that have freckles on them too. They're so cute, but yeah, really love having fresh eggs. It's very nice. It is crisp outside today. Tomorrow is supposed to be 70 somehow. Oh, I, I have not filmed for you guys in a while and I'm sorry for that, but I recently moved the quail outside. Look at that. So I have been shutting the rabbitry door because it is cold outside and hopefully there's enough light in here for you guys to kind of see what is going on. So this is Sparrow right here kind of put the two pregnant ladies together. But this is Sparrow. And she was bred by one of my friend's rabbits who we affectionately call Big Head Ron. And I, I am having doubts that Sparrow is pregnant, but I don't really know. This is Miss Vanilla. And she is the daughter of Cassia and Peter. And I described in past videos that I thought that Vanilla was getting a bit of an attitude, and she was. She was bred, and she did turn into Satan for a week or two, but then she really, really mellowed out, and now she just wants to be pet. So I hope that's a good sign that she is not going to be evil like her mother, but look at this. Hello, sweet girl. Yeah. She is just wanting to be pet. And she does have a big belly. So she has been feverishly nesting, which is exciting. I love it when rabbits hay stash, um, but her due date is actually tomorrow. Um, since it's just tomorrow though, 
I either expect her to have them tomorrow or Thursday. I, always, I almost always don't expect to come out on day 31 to, and see babies. Usually with my rabbits, I expect to see them on day 32. And that's just something that I've noticed with my rabbits in particular. I don't know if it's the climate. I don't know if it is the sixth class breed. Many of my friends say the same thing. Just day 32 is usually more typical. But yeah. So I'm very happy that Vanilla is so sweet now. Um, and I'm not gonna peek in her box because there's no fur in there. And I do not think that she would have her babies a day early, so. I'm excited though. <laughs> It's always so exciting for me when I know that baby bunnies are coming. And that's why I do this, because I just love them. <laughs> it doesn't get old to me. I did separate out Twix's litter already. Did it a little bit early for her, but this is her and her daughters. We have two chocolate daughters and two black daughters, and they are all looking very, very cute. I have not even attempted to pose these guys up, but I believe they are coming up on eight weeks old. And they're all, they're so cute. You guys are so cute. Yes. They are getting a bit crowded. So we have plenty of cages open right now. There's, there's two down here. There's two down here. And those are all filled up. So we really, we have four open cages. So we could separate them out a little bit. But I just have them on Twix still. We'll probably move Twix out because she is the biggest one in there. And then think about who we're going to breed Miss Twix to once she has a couple of weeks off. So we'll see what happens. You are such a good mama. These are Twix's little bucks here. Minus this little guy, he was just a fostered baby from Clove's Litter because Twix raised one up and Tundra raised two of them up. We only had three survivors in that litter, but he is so personable and so cute, so really love him. But yes, these are her, th these are Twix's actual sons here, the two chocolates and the blue. The blue is literally so chunky. Are you licking me? Please do not bite. He's licking me. <laughs> but yeah, of course the prettiest chocolate back there is the one that is a little bit nervous around people. Do not bite me, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to bite. That's mean. I love that little blue back there, though. Oh my gosh, he is so stinking cute. He's such a little chunk. Yes, you are so chunky. I actually think for right now, I'm just gonna leave the rabbitry open. It's not actually that cold out right now. He's a little bit cold, but I'm from Indiana, so I don't believe it's I don't believe it's super cold right now. This is Tundra and her current litter, plus the two Creme de Argent foster babies and they are all doing very well. These guys have excellent grow rates. I'm very pleased with them. I believe we had in Tundra's litter, we had two blues and how many blacks? Two blues and five blacks, it looks like. Um, it's so hard to keep track, you guys. Sometimes I just, I don't even know what I have. This is Miss Cassia and her current litter. She has raised 10 of them successfully, all of them are doing well, other than the fact that they are underweight for their age. But they are healthy, they look healthy, and they're doing really well, they're just too small right now. I don't know for sure if they're gonna make weight, but we will surely see. I mean, she has nice babies. This is another litter between her and Shuro. I don't know if they're small because of how many there are in the litter, or if it's a problem with Cassia having issues feeding them early on. But all we can really do at this point is just grow them out. And I'm gonna grow all of these guys out at least to 14 weeks old at the very minimum because that is when nationals are happening. I did want to show you guys the chickens. I'm happy that I made the run because our grass and the mud has kind of gotten a little bit better. We still have mud. Um, but it's gonna get, I know it's gonna get better. It does every year. How is everybody? Doing well? Say hello to the YouTube. Are you guys happy? Well, thank you for pooping, Sunny, on the camera. That's nice. Hi, Scuba. Hello, Scuba. Hi. 
Hey. Mark my words, you guys, I will have a Salmon Favreau breeding program someday. I promise you that. I want to be able to sell Salmon Favreau hatching eggs and chicks so bad because I love that breed. I love their little beards and they're just so endearingly kind of stupid. <laughs> I just love them. Look at that. I did take out the fake eggs finally because with them being in the run enclosed and not able to go around the yard, I figured, well, they know where they're supposed to lay their eggs. So I gotta gather these up. There's a lot of them. Got eight eggs today. It's crazy. I told Jameson that I've been waiting two years for my chickens to all start laying at the same time. And I finally have them doing that. And so I can have my little rainbow egg collection, even though I don't have any buyers for them. <laughs> So now that our rabbit is done cooking, like I said, we want to make sure that we let the Instant Pot natural release for about 10 minutes. And then I just remove the rabbit with tongs. Don't try to shred it right after taking it out because you will get burned. I would also like to add that you can totally do this recipe with a chicken instead of a rabbit too, if you have more chickens than you have rabbits. Once we've pulled out the whole rabbit from the Instant Pot, you're gonna wanna save the broth that is at the bottom of the pot. We can either use this in our noodle soup that we're making, or you can save it and use it in a future recipe. While my rabbit is cooling on a cookie sheet, that is when I like to cut my veggies all up. So a classic chicken noodle soup usually uses onion, garlic, celery and carrots and honestly that's what we're going to be doing in this recipe today i like the classic so for rabbit noodle soup it's going to be the same thing so i just like to dice up the onion as finely as i can get it i use about usually three to four carrots depending on the size of them um, the carrots that i had this time were on the smaller side so i just used four whole carrots and i don't peel my carrots i just wash them really well and then i just cut them up from there i'm also using the very end of the celery that i have in my fridge but if you have nice and new celery i would recommend using maybe three to four large stalks my stalks were all very small so i just used all what i had left and finally, the last thing I'm cutting up here is the garlic. Don't skimp out on the garlic, you guys. Garlic is so good in soups. I think I used maybe four to five cloves of garlic in this recipe. We have to take a moment to stop and see what Jameson is doing because I told you guys we did make homemade noodles. I made these just, I don't know, an hour ago maybe. And it's got to sit at room temperature, so it was finally ready. Jameson's doing his thing with the KitchenAid attachment. <laughs> One thing that we are doing differently with the pasta this time is that usually we use the uh, pasta cutter attachment, um, but this time we are actually going to be hand cutting the noodles. We want them to be nice and wide, like wide egg noodles. Jameson made these noodles very, very wide, and while they were really, really good, they ended up being kind of hard to work with, but they were delicious, so I'm not gonna knock him for that. After I cut up all of my veggies, that is when I will debone my rabbit. And it's really easy to shred right off the bone after it's been cooked in the Instant Pot. Uh, I think this was a three pound fryer rabbit. So we got quite a bit of meat off of it and we're probably just gonna be using about half of it. So now it's time to start our soups. So we're gonna do about one tablespoon of olive oil and we're gonna add our onions into there. Stir around until they're getting caramelized and mine were actually getting a bit dry. So I splashed a bit of broth in there. Once my onions are all nice and soft and cooked down that's when I add the rest of my veggies including the garlic and then my seasonings so I did half a teaspoon of onion powder half a teaspoon of garlic powder half a teaspoon of salt and about half a teaspoon of black pepper stir it all together kind of let it sweat out and then after about five minutes you want to add your broth as you can see my broth was still slightly frozen if you guys haven't seen my bone broth video yet, I would highly recommend checking out that video because that is where I will explain how to make a delicious bone broth that you can use for this soup. 
I also added some dried herbs, some dried parsley and some dried oregano. It is very good once it rehydrates in the soup. It just adds a nice little flavor. Typically, I like to let my veggies simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes so they can get kind of soft, but not mushy. We don't want mushy vegetables. So we just go for about 10 to 15 minutes until they are fork tender. And then after that, we will add our shredded meat to the pot and reduce the heat to just the very lowest setting. At this point, we are going to boil our noodles for about one to two minutes since they are homemade. If you have store-bought noodles, then I would recommend going by the box instructions. I don't like to make my noodles in the soup itself because they tend to absorb a lot of the broth and I don't want them to do that. So I tend to just add my noodles as I'm getting ready to serve the noodle soup. So I just kind of layer it in the bowl and voila, you have a delicious, rabbit noodle soup. It is actually two days after I filmed that original uh, part of the vlog and I don't have a lot of time right now because Mirin has her last kitten vet appointment um, in like 30 minutes. <laughs> but I did come out here this morning and finally um, Vanilla has had her babies so I wanted to check with you guys. I've not even looked in there yet, so I really wanted to get a count and see how many there were. I don't know if Sparrow's actually pregnant or not. Um, she still hasn't had her babies. It's day 33 for her, and I'll let her go until, a lot of people will tell you until day 40, but she's not had any nesting behavior. So if she doesn't have babies by day 35, we'll think about rebreeding her. Um, or we may wait until um, mini convention because um, I'll have another buck to use that is from my friends, so. But right now we're gonna get Vanilla's nest box out and check and see how many babies she had, if there are any dead ones, all of that, so. So she didn't pull a whole lot of fur. This is her first litter. And I'm not too concerned though, they're inside, <clears throat> so they should be completely fine. Got one, two, three, four, five, six. So it looks like she just had six, which is a great first litter size. I actually am very, very happy that she had six. Um, rabbits have eight-ish nipples. Um, and for first timers, if they have more than eight, they can tend to have a really hard time keeping them all alive. So I'm actually really happy that she's had six. I want these guys to thrive. I don't want there to be too many in the litter. So that's awesome. Yay, we have little babies. So I'll put them back now. Uh, I don't want to keep them out for too long because I actually don't know if she was done pulling fur. She might still be pulling a little bit. Sometimes if it's a rabbit's first litter um, and they don't exactly, like they've never done it before. So a lot of the times I've seen rabbits not pull uh, enough fur until they, after they've given birth. So she's probably gonna pull more in the next day or two. Sorry guys, it's very windy outside. <laughs> Well guys, I will keep you updated on whether or not Sparrow has her babies 
I don't know. I'm not holding out hope, but we might be surprised. We'll see. Um, and I'll also keep you up to date on Vanilla's new babies. And we'll talk more about rabbits, of course, on my future videos. So uh, if you're not already, hit that subscribe button. And if you're already subscribed, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I really enjoy that. And yeah, so I've got to get Mirren to a vet appointment. So I will see you guys on the next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.